going on, people of planet Earth? We're on the highway and filming a video that's probably not safe. Hey, listen, before we even get started, I want you to subscribe. I want your mom to subscribe. I want your brother, who you haven't talked to in four months because you started dating his girlfriend. I want y'all to make amends and get him to subscribe because we got to go big. I want people to see this. Uh, we're going to get this YZ 252 stroke. It's going to be my bike that I'll be milling my cylinder heads for for the next few weeks. So stick along for the ride. Don't you go anywhere. We're doing this together, okay? See you in the shop. All right, there she is, 2014. YZ 250. It's kind of windy. I don't know if you can hear much. But, uh, yeah, really nice bike. All right, great. Start our first gig, so gave the man cash money. Okay, here we are in Fusion where all the magic happens. Working on the 1999 through 2021 YZ250 cylinder head that's gonna go on the bike I just picked up. It's kind of playing with the aesthetic here. I got a couple of options um, for the look. Obviously, just the top piece is a two piece head. Got the combustion chamber here. And I'm gonna be modifying the profile of the stock. Um, combustion chamber. You can see I actually took the OEM one and cut it in half and making some modifications to the squish clearance and the uh, the dome here, the combustion chamber itself to be a little more woods friendly. I was really shocked to see when I got the bike home and you know, me being a long time four stroke guy, uh, this bike was set up for woods and I took it out. It is not woods friendly. It has a lot of, of uh, top end power as you expect from a uh, you know, two-stroke 250, and the, the bottom is lacking. So we're going to change that, add some more bark to the bottom, uh, make the power curve a little more linear. Because when you're in tight spaces in the in the trees, you don't want that. You want something that's going to pull hard off the bottom. Um, so going to add some torque. We're going to make a bunch of these, test all of them. I'm going to get some riders that are more advanced than myself, uh, test them with me, and get it perfected. So I will spare you all the hours and hours of boring modeling and programming, and I'll see you guys on the mill. Be in the video. Yeah, you can be in the video. You want to be in the video? You can be in the video. All right, here we go. I got my five-inch round stock loaded up on the vice, ready to rock and roll. Got my probe ready to probe. Uh, since I made a video last with this mill, I actually broke my X-axis ball screw. Uh, that was a doozy. I don't know what caused it exactly. I don't know if my gibs were a little too tight from the factory or I had some um, poor lubrication, but got that squared away. I am getting some rust on the bed. It's kind of hard to avoid here in Texas, it's really humid. I know some of the, uh, the machinists out there watching this are probably screaming at me through the computer. So scream away, I understand. I'm doing what I can to mitigate it, but it's tough. Um, but yeah, I got the new X-axis ball screw in there. Tormach sent me a, another one. I, I did have to pay for it, <laughs> even though they said it's extremely uncommon. But I got it in the mail. I threw it in there to the best of my ability. I think we're good to go now. I might get it adjusted properly. But yeah, let's find out. Let's run this program. Here we go. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal.
there we have it. So X axis held up, part looks good. Um, put some big chamfers on it. I, I did a finishing pass on the biggest portion of the diameter on the bottom here, uh, but I left the interpolations up top, so I kind of feel like it gives it a cool look. I know some people may think it looks cheap, but I kind of like it. Let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I can always change it later, you know. Um, but yeah, looks good. My bore holes came out uh, exactly how I programmed them. I had a problem before where they were always undersized a bit, but it came out good this time. Um, I left this step for now. Later, when I'm running production, I'll use a ball to uh, to smooth out the, that slope. But for now, for testing purposes, we're going to run with this. Uh, yeah, let's get started with the uh, combustion chamber now. You still didn't like the video? Do it! Just do it! We got close. Heed my word, don't buy a bandsaw from Harbor Freight. Okay, you have to excuse the voice. I'm actually a little under the weather still. Got sick since I filmed those last few clips you saw. But anyway, got this cut off all the way. Just checking some last minute uh, compatibility fitment between the insert and the top piece. Everything looks good. So let's go throw it on the mill. One's done, got it flipped. Running pretty close to the vise here. That's always fun. Let's do op two. So really this part is a lathe part. It's not a mill part, but for now, making do. Pretty soon my buddy Michael Schmeling uh, down in Houston is gonna be helping me out. We'll be making these on a CNC lathe. Uh, but for testing purposes, this will be fine. We just have to cut really close to the vise for right now. And it would be a lot faster on a lathe, but for now this will work. Okay, so we got the OD done. Now we're hogging out the middle with some helical boring and just roughing out the uh, interior of the profile with dome. And then we'll come back with a uh, ball end mill, do our 3D, and then contour it up to finish it. Okay, this is how the insert looks roughed out with our quarter inch ball end mill. And uh, see if we can make this look like it was made on a lathe. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty proud of that. A couple of tool marks, but not bad. Coming off a mill and not a lathe for a lathe part, that looks pretty smooth. And that'll definitely run right there. So for the time being, I am hand tapping these holes for my coolant. Uh, I need to get some thread mills. I don't have the appropriate thread mill for this and my machine does not have rigid tapping. And I don't have the compression heads. I don't even think they make a compression head for tapping big enough for these holes. So for the time being, finishing these off, hand tapping, and I'm gonna run uh, an insert coolant jacket. I'm not sure if that's gonna be the method I'll stick with, but for now, uh, it'll do. Pretty clean though, that'll work. Okay, there we have it, two pieces are finished. Insert and the uh, top of the cylinder head are ready to be mated together. Um, one of the things that makes this process pretty difficult is that your margin for error and your tolerance in Z, your heights, uh, there's essentially no margin for error. All of your heights have to be perfect on your insert and have to match all of the heights on these flat spots on the inside of the top of the head so that when it fits together, it's as smooth as glass. You can't even have a thousandth of a difference between the two and they're not gonna seal up properly. So setup is critical. Uh, you have to really make sure all of your parallels are perfectly clean, your mill's trammed up and leveled right, 
um, otherwise it's not going to run right so uh, it's a uh, delicate process but in this case um, everything fits perfectly so let's go get it on the bike before my voice completely disappears sorry guys it's getting worse and worse so let's get it bolted on put some coolant in it and fire it up and we've got our insert with our o-ring installed okay everything's bolted up not gonna lie it's pretty crazy to see a billet part that i made on the bike ready to run so we got coolant let's get the gas tank on the seat let's fire it up all right she's buttoned up will she fire up yep first kick Rich on the jetting. <laughs> Little rich on the jetting, but hey, fires right up. Sounds great. It's really exciting. Uh, we'll get the jetting dialed in for part two, where we go rip this thing in the woods and see what kind of a difference we made. So stay tuned, and uh, once again. Thanks for watching.